Um, everybody, I think we are ready to start this uh, webinar from Vigafoss. Uh, we just started a few minutes later just to have more participants. I hope it's okay with you, but going back to the webinar. So the webinar from Vigafoss today is going to be about Hoof Health and our hoof care product, Hoofoss. My name is uh, Jan Storborg. I am a technical advisor on the products Hoofos and all you know the Stelosan products as well. Today we will have two presentations. The first one will be held by my colleague uh, Risto de Mismo. He is going to talk about hoof health in general. The second presentation will be held by me and that is going to be more specific on our product Hoofos, how to use it, what to expect, efficacy and so on. Um, it is possible to ask questions during those two presentations and you can do that in the chat and after the presentations we will go through those questions the best we can. Uh, this session here in general will be recorded and it will be sent to you after uh, the, the webinar has ended along with our presentations. Uh, if there is no objections to this recording, we will take this as an approval of the recording. Uh, please, everybody, enjoy the webinar and the list of the word is yours. Thank you, Jan, uh, for a kindly uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Christo Dimitrov. Uh, I will present you uh, 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 information about uh, our last research in the farms uh, and also using uh, a Hoofos product. Um, just to share my screen. Um, today the topic, uh, it will be economic losses connected uh, of hoof diseases uh, in dairy farming. Um, we start with this slide here uh, with the financial losses caused by the limbness. Um, this is the breakdown of annual cost of limbness uh, in, in the dairy herds. Um, here you can see uh, uh, the split percents of uh, the cost by vet cost, cooling, uh, reduce the milk yields, fertility cost, labor and medicine uh, by percent. Uh, the lameness have a huge impact uh, into the into the health of the animals and uh, causes the very um, big problems in the farms. So what are the reasons uh, of lameness? And um, there are three. Uh, one of them we will uh, present right now by environment reasons. Uh, the second one are nutritional and also genetics. And here I want to share with you um, information from Nigel Cook, 2018. Uh, he shared with us 23% uh, from the cows in the world are suffering from lameness. So have a huge impact into the into the de that sector. Um, here on that slide, you can see uh, one of the environmental reasons uh, of the lameness. Uh, this is the heat stress. Uh, heat stress may be a, a potential risk factors for reducing clean times and associated with lameness and increasing the rate of the claw horn lesions associated lameness in the late summer has been reported um, and associated with the periods of the heat stress in the Wisconsin dairy herds. Uh, this is also words of Nigel Cook. Uh, by, I want to share with you when the cows are, are having heat stress, they are standing uh, because they want to cool down their bodies. So that's why they are have uh, a lot of pressure on the claws uh, by uh, on the concrete. Uh, cows spend more time uh, standing instead of resting and slowly 
affect the process of the keratin formulation on the hoof and allowing lesions to occur. Uh, in that case, uh, when our, we try to cool down our animals, we use uh, normally water, and this also could be effect of the increasing the infectious uh, diseases uh, in, into our herd. So uh, try to to keep it uh, a dry floors and uh, and not to be so uh, wet in the environment. Overcrowding, uh, it's the, also one of the environment uh, reasons to, to your cow to become lame. Uh, a virus research study shows that overcrowding dairy herds in the group will have uh, uh, detrimental health effects for the cows mainly, due to increasing in standing time, which can lead to loss of resting time and hoof problems. Um, I want to uh, add here a little bit um, uh, when it's overgrowing, uh, our environment um, are, it's became more uh, with uh, manure. The cows are defecated more, and uh, they are the environment became uh, much worse, and it's not clean, so it's uh, it's it's bad for the animals. Overgrowing could uh, affect lane times and uh, affect lameness uh, prevalence. Specifically, when the when the dry cows, close-up or farrow groups are crowded, they are frequently suffer from more metabolic and claw problems. Uh, here, my point is, uh, we need to find a way to treat our cows in the dry period with more space and clear environment, uh, because as we know, the cows are carrying babies and they are a little bit heavy uh, instead of milking cows. So uh, more space in the drying period, more clean environment uh, could be prevent the lameness uh, after lactation, after the drying period. Cow comfort, it's uh, also one of the environment uh, reasons to have a lameness, um, reducing the comfort, uh, its influence to the lameness incidence and increasing the risk of developing new cases and uh, the, the time it takes uh, for a cow to recover. Um, so we need to, uh, we need to focus on, on that. Our cows are feeling comfortable. They have a nice bed uh, to lay down. Uh, just to, they will produce more milk if they feel comfortable. And also, um, for example, if we have short uh, bedding area, uh, the cows are, will defecate it in the and this uh, area are going to be um, a very bad for for the skin, um, and uh, it could be uh, they can they can affect from from infectious diseases. Um, concrete and bat floor here the cows are laying land animals. They prefer soft surfaces for walking and laying down. High flowing suffer are less comfortable for cows and contribute the claws horn overgrowth and uh, weight bearing distributors that uh, causes the lameness. As you can see on that picture here, the cows are, uh, this is the rubber here. Mm -hmm. Cows are looking for, uh, by instinct, the, the soft surfaces. So, so they are uh, preferring to have a, a nice uh, walking path. They don't like uh, a concrete um, and uh, they will have uh, a trouble if they are on, on the concrete. Uh, depending upon the formulation and how it's finished, it, it's uh, capable to create on extremely abrasive surfaces for dairy cows, claws, uh, new, New concrete is more abrasive than the old one. This uh, has to be as a take home message. And uh, wet concrete, it's 83% more abrasive than uh, drying concrete. So uh, this is also a big issue. And I also, oh, I also want to point a, uh, a note here. Uh, we have to 
uh, concentrating that the floor it's not got uh, have uh, a little stones uh, on the ground because it also can affect the claw health. Uh, hoof trimming. I want to uh, uh, present. I want to share with you my experience uh, as a trimmer. Uh, I put myself first um, when we trim cows because uh, safety is first. Uh, if you cut your finger, you uh, you have a damage and you cannot help it to the animals. Um, so proper trimming, uh, hoof trimming method, it's uh, uh, quite well known from on in the in the community of hoof trimmings. Uh, I prefer and five step touch hoof trimming method uh, just because uh, it's easy to learn it and it's a uh, very uh, simple to to use it. Software for lesion registration, um, registration of the hoof diseases. It's it's a uh, core of our work. So that's why we need to uh, we need to register the lesions um, to have a clear picture of the of our farm and lesions into the herd. Monitoring recovery process, locomotion scoring uh, after trimming we need to figure out uh, which cow it's okay uh, became healthy again and which cows it's became worse because uh, most of the time uh, we have to uh, we have to look on that process so if we have some sick cows we need to uh, take them off from from the groups treatment all lesions in the time the manner uh, get ahead of the process means uh, the hoof trimming it's a, a racing uh, if we are not uh, became first the the lesions will appear and uh, it will the animal will struggle with a lot of pain and uh, the last one disinfect your tools and equipment because uh, we can spread diseases uh, from knives or from from grinders uh, this is also uh, a big issue and we have to do that just because don't to don't spread uh, diseases into our herd. Um, here it's a little bit etology of uh, digital dermatites from uh, uh, Dofton. Digital dermatites it's a considerable consider it's influence claw diseases uh, with strong bacteria component uh, what is the causes uh, of digital dermatites? It's uh, Aspirohetes of uh, Traponema. Um, other bacteria species uh, isolated from the core DD lesions are uh, Phosobactericum spirohetes, uh, which they cause a full throat and uh, phlegmons uh, into our herd. Neglecting uh, cases uh, of acute DD may develop painful phlegmons and infected uh, infections of the deep digital structure that may be require surgical cases and recovery. So, if we uh, if we act more fast, then uh, our animals will recover more more faster. Another point I want to mention in that presentation is that uh, uh, there are several. Um, cases uh, with uh, digital dermatites associated with the claw horn lesions. Um, digital dermatites associated both in claw horn characterized by penetration into the horn capsule and associated with the white line infections or or sole ulcer are frequently incorporated uh, in dairy herds and uh, can uh, have a lot of uh, time to to recover uh, in the herd with epidemic digital dermatitis infection the exposure corium of the wall and the and the soul is also affected uh, with treponema uh, so from my experience in these cases we need to figure out we need to find out we need to fight first with the with the infection problems as uh, causes by treponema and then when we recover this area, we need to wait for the 
to, to the Corium to, to grow up again. So these are the worst case scenario in, uh, in your, your farm. So you need to take care of these cows uh, with a lot of attention. Um, preventing digital dermatites or Motoralo, uh, how they call it by the professor Motoralo, by trimming or by genetics, uh, correcting the angle of the hoof by trimming, uh, it's a common mistake and it, uh, with uh, cutting too thin heel. And, it, and it, this maybe uh, can affect uh, the percent, uh, can, be, can have a higher percent of the infected animals into, into your herds. The skin in the digital zone has come into the contact with the manure or orion and have more often and harmful effect uh, with on the animals and they ha have higher risk of the infections so this area here on the on the on the heel can be more times uh, in, connected to the to the concrete so this is also influenced to the increasing of the infectious diseases. Um, I want to share with you a, a farm survey from uh, my, my last farm survey from 2020-2021. Uh, in the farm with capacity with 450 dairy cows, Holstein breed uh, in the area of, of uh, Bulgaria. Then uh, here the client uh, apply hoof uh, first by uh, by spraying uh, several times in the in the milking barrel uh, so and then we decided to to use a hoof bath um, more frequently the reason for this was to cover more problems uh, by infected areas because there was uh, several cases with uh, with uh, dd and uh, also chlor or lesions. Uh, the program was following a hoof bath uh, per one week, uh, one time per week, and uh, have uh, achieved a good results. And the client still use that product, and he's very uh, pleased, pleased with with that. Uh, before to start. Uh, this uh, survey uh, in the period of March 2020. Uh, we examined uh, the infectious disease uh, of the hoofs in the milking barrel. We uh, uh, find out there are 28% of the all herds was infected by digital dermatites. Uh, and we also find out uh, uh, several uh, cases with uh, foot rot, as they call it, the phlegmon. Interdigital phlegmon, um, they was also found in, in that farm. By controlling in December 2020, uh, during the period after starting the product, uh, for more than 10 months, the examination of the infectious disease of the hooves was uh, decreasing by 3% uh, of digital dermatites for the whole herd. Uh, these are the words of the farm manager we watch it the animals improve the hoof health and increasing productivity some of the animals with food rot was removed from the herd during the complications and replace it with the new animals uh, and here are the statistic and tracking the action of the hoof loss by controlling march uh, you can see on this uh, diagram here uh, and controlling in december by controlling March, uh, there was found 28% of digital dermatites and they decreasing by 3%. Um, here, uh, we use that uh, scientific research by Cornell University from 2010 by the costing, uh, by the cost and, and losses in the treatment of the digital dermatites and food rot. We only uh, we only take on, on the consideration the digital dermatites. Um, as you can see here, it's the uh, per per one day. This is the cost per one day. And on the next slide, you can see the cost and losses per case. Uh, so in that 
uh, study, it's also the same study from the Cornell University from 2010. And you can see here it's per case in dollars uh, by milk losses, by decreasing fertility and treatment cost. So we take that number here uh, by in digital dermatites in $132.96 per case. And we put it into these uh, control uh, financial losses in the period of March 2020, December 2020. And we find out here uh, by what is the, the financial losses of the farmer. So in cases in 28% of the cows in, in 109 animals, we have losses by 14 point four hundred ninety two point sixty four dollars it's a it's a huge uh, uh, losses for the farmer so after when we start when we use our product hufos there was uh, a decreasing by uh, 14 animals with dd and the milk uh, and the losses was uh, one thousand eight hundred sixty one point forty four dollars uh, so you you see here the the impact of uh, of the of the claw health into the farm. And uh, take home message I want to share with you as a uh, we cut the tree. We have a ring here, so maybe we should think about the the lameness as the trees. Uh, sounds funny, but uh, we can track the process here and you can see what is the problem actually and which time. So by recording the lesions, we will have a clear picture of that. Thank you for your attention, Jan, to you. Okay, thank you for that presentation, Risto. Uh, yeah, questions we will uh, handle afterwards. So uh, I will just go directly to my presentation. I hope you can see it all and you can hear me clearly. So yeah, 15, 20 minutes. I hope this will last. Uh, this is more as said specific on uh, HUFAS, some practical advices. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So just a bit of a short info for those who don't know this product, uh, just a bit of, on, on the profile. So it is a liquid, it is uh, ready to use, uh, it is in a very highly concentrated form and definitely mostly it is used uh, concentrated as it is. Uh, we use it, we apply it uh, by a sprayer, I will come back to that, and also in hoof baths. Uh, the composition of this kind of the overall not too precise composition, but what the main ingredients is, is inorganic mineral acids. pH value 2.5, so it, it is a weak acid, mainly uh, composed of aluminium, iron and zinc. And so the idea of this product is when cows get treated, they walk through a hoof bath or they are being sprayed, this liquid will dry out, you can see it here, and sometimes it's possible to see those white precipitates, the sediments, and that is the mineral acids in the product, and it stays there for a long time. It binds hard and it provides a long term effect. What we see after some years on market is that it, it, it treats and prevents both acute and chronic ED cases. Yeah, moving on to just a short uh, presentation of the mechanism of action. Uh, this is uh, just an illustration, very simple one. We have a uh, skin surface. You know, it could be down here where we have the classical glue case. So the skin here just above uh, the hoof on a cow. We have a surface with uh, something called sebum. This is a highly acidic, uh, waxy uh, substance that prevents bacteria from infecting. We always have bacteria in the environment uh, and we also have treponema, one of the major a bacteria that is responsible for uh, digital dermatitis or motilau. And then of course also the skin of the hoof on the cow in a barn environment will have a lot of manure, a lot of moisture and a lot of ammonia. So that also gets into contact with the skin. Whoa, 
And after some time, this uh, combination of ammonia with a high pH value that breaks down the skin, the moist environment, the level of bacteria, and the, the manure will break down this protective layer. And when it breaks down that layer, bacteria now can enter. There is no more inhibition from uh, the organic acids within this uh, sebum. So bacteria will infect, they will cause a wound. After some time, they will form what is called a biofilm. It is kind of a, a closure that uh, really provides, provides a nice environment for the bacteria and protects the bacteria from outcoming whatever, you know, for instance, treatments, antibiotics, disinfectants, where biofilm is extremely resistant. So once a cow are at this stage with an ED wound, it's actually quite hard, hard to, to, uh, to treat. Okay, now we do, for instance, a spraying with hoofers, and what happens is that hoofers has a very high cleaning effect and also a high drying effect. So it kind of removes uh, the manure, the moisture, it dries it out, and it also provides a low pH value, which is something trepanemic bacteria do not like. So trepanema prefers to grow above pH 4 with a pH at 2.5. Suddenly those bacteria have a heart uh, condition. Also in the product of hoofers, we have something that can dissolve biofilm without destroying the tissue. So that is the next step to get rid of this uh, highly resistant biofilm with the bacteria within. Now we have a clean open wound. This is very fragile and very, uh, there is a big chance of a reinfection if we just let a cow back into the uh, barn environment, into the hoof environment with a situation like this. So we need to push it further. And the good thing is that those uh, mineral uh, acids within hoof us, they stick hard to the skin, to the wound and protects uh, the wound from uh, the harmful uh, hoof environment. And finally, also some ingredients in the product are actually contracting the tissue so it closes up and it also forms a black scab as you can see here it coagulates the blood and forms a black scab protects the surface now the cow can go back into the barn with all the moist manure and bacteria and it doesn't matter because the skin are protected so that is very fast explanation on how uh, this product is working let's move on this is a not very handsome guy, but still it's me standing with uh, some of, uh, I would say this is the, the method of application that we recommend the most at the moment. Uh, spraying uh, hoofers or spraying in general when we treat uh, cow hooves for, for instance, uh, ligatory limititis or other uh, problems is definitely the spraying. The spraying will provide a safe and secure contact and you can control exactly where you hit with the product. There is not going to be any pollution from manure or, or anything else. So definitely if it is possible and if, if it is the classical cases on the rear uh, legs on a cow and in the back of the legs on a cow like here, definitely the spraying is the most cost uh, beneficial and most effective way of treating. And we recommend clearly that when if you decide to start with hoofers and if you decide to start with the spraying for instance in the milking parlor or in the rotary or even in the cow barn uh, best with the cow in headlocks but if you don't have headlocks uh, just walking around nice and slow among the cows is also possible and here we really recommend hardly a super quality sprayer with a, a battery so an accu sprayer it is too hard for yourself to continuously pump and ensure a high pressure. And when we use a product like this, we need to have a good washing, a good flush. It is not enough with just a small like that. We need to see this as a washing, as a flushing. And the next uh, slide here is again me. This is also on YouTube and our homepage. This is to demonstrate how important it is to do this in the right way. I will start this video now. It takes one minute. Um, and just, you know, pour it, concentrate it directly into the, and here you can spray it in the milking, uh, in the cow barn. 
This is cows never been treated before and they will react in the beginning as you can see, but it's not difficult. If I'll just stop it here. Hang on. A good, a good advice is if you start to spray just very short on one hoof, then the cow will lift up the hoof and have all its weight on the other one, on, on the other back the leg. Then just move fast to the other one and you've got a lot of time to spray and the cow cannot remove uh, the leg because the weight is here. Then after some time, the cow realizes now it is here we are spraying and it pushes the weight over here and lifts this one. And then you go back and spray this fixated uh, hoof again because all the weight is here. So a short spray here and move over and wash through and move back and wash through. And that is what I'm doing here, at least with some of the cows. Okay, and this is in the milking uh, parlor. I think there is a few places where I do this also. I go back and spray again. Yeah, here. Maybe not so successful, but just to, to let you know how close we need to go with the nozzle. Here you can see it in slow motion. We have to go. We have to go all the way in the hoof cliff. Don't start the sprayer before the nozzle is all the way in the cliff. And once it is in the cliff, you start the flushing. And then you take it out. Ah, sorry for the technical problems. <laughs> then you take it out and you move it upwards over the DD area. So go deep in the cleft, spray, it comes out on the other side in the front of the roof and go upwards and cover any DD wound that may be there. Again, you know, from two, two, three different angles, you can see how it goes through. It is important also to treat the hoof cleft because often here we see issues as well. We see trichonema starts the growth uh, here. We see often DD starts here as well. So treatment, here is important. Uh, there is some limitations in, in the, this uh, spraying method. I will get back to that later. Moving on to, um, to uh, the application in a hoof bath. Uh, in contrast to other uh, recommendations uh, from experts, veterinarians worldwide, that says we have to have a long hoof bath of at least three and a half meter we need at least, you know, to, through three dips per hoof in order to get proper uh, treatment. I really uh, acknowledge that. I accept that and I understand that. But for this product, this is not necessary. So for hoof us, we need only one dip, one contact. And because of that, we can use because of that, we can use a much smaller hoof bar. So this one here is uh, two meters long. Inside measure is 1.85 meters. The width is, uh, I think, around uh, 70 centimeters. And we only add uh, around five centimeters of glyphos. In the beginning, it should be concentrated to have a maximum uh, effect. After some time, let's say one, three months, when, when a farmer, when you see a nice effect, you see the black, the scabs I explained about earlier, then you know the effect is there, you know it is, it is starting to work, then you can start to experiment, start to reduce, say okay maybe we can dilute uh, a three part hoof force with one part water or two part hoof force with one uh, part water or even as Heristo explained earlier with this farm in Bulgaria, you could say not twice per week as actually uh, recommended, I haven't said that, but spraying and hoof bath is twice per week, but in the case in Bulgaria with the farm from uh, Haristo, they did it once per week, if I understood it correctly. That is also a possibility. It is different from farm to farm. Some places there is a higher pressure. Uh, the hoof environment is more damaging. They have more problems, more issues in general. Maybe here it's not possible. Other places they have very nice dry slatted floors, for instance, sand in the beds, for instance very low uh, hoof problems in general. Maybe they can use only once per week or even one, once every second week. So it varies a lot. But please start up two times per week, concentrated five centimeters 
go for a month, look for black scabs, less lameness, and then you can start. If you go down and you, you, you reach a level that is just too low for a good effect, you will see in three weeks time because then problem starts to go up again. So it, it is a way to kind of find the, the perfect solution for you with the least uh, expenses. And here I just set up a cow, a, a roof path here. This is not even five centimeters. This is only three, four centimeters. It was just to experiment and see if I could actually get a dip of the rear part uh, of the roof. And it, we, we did indeed manage that. Those cows here has never ever seen this uh, roof path before and, and the way of, of uh, setting it up. So they were quite nice uh, walking slowly through. Okay, uh, I will not go into more details about this. Uh, okay, just a bit about should we spray or should we use a roof bath? Um, as said from the beginning, I really prefer a hoof, uh, uh, the sprayer because it is more safe, uh, the efficacy is usually higher, and the price is three times, four times lower compared to roof bath. So for me, always, I recommend to start with the spraying, uh, go and see and provide and have the effect, be sure about the effect, and then consider, should I continue with the spraying? It wasn't so bad after all, or should I, uh, uh, switch over to hoof bath as the case was uh, for the Bulgarian farmer. Uh, but so, so that is my recommendation. Having said that, there is some issues, some problems with the spraying, of course, and that is what is it you actually want to treat. So if there is many DD cases, for instance, on the front legs, very, very difficult to reach in under the cow in the milking parlor, for instance, and spraying the front leg and also too dangerous. So we don't recommend in a milking parlor or even in a, in a rotary to spray the front legs. So the spraying is for cows with a classical DD on the rear legs, classical place here, or in the hoof cliff. So if there are cases with uh, problems in the front uh, of the back feet or even in the front of the front feet, then maybe this is not the right uh, application for. Also, it could be that you, there is issues with other infections, where we, which we haven't spoken about today, where again, it's difficult uh, to get any uh, sufficient contact with a spraying method. Then again, we would recommend the, the hoof bar. But if you want to start, you want to see, will this help my house? Will I see anything good? Go for the sprayer for at least a month. Look for those classical cases on the rear uh, feet. I will show it to you here. You have a, a, a classical uh, M2 uh, ED here uh, on the rear legs. This is a trial from uh, Ireland. A very nice uh, dairy farmer, Stephen Nagel, who in the spring of this year uh, did a, a trial that lasts for uh, three months. Uh, here we only have the first uh, 20, 27 days, uh, but here we have a classical uh, case of DD at, at day zero before starting any real treatment. And then Stephen started to spray uh, Monday, Thursday, two times per week. So that means maybe two, uh, three, two, three treatments before he took this picture here. And as you can see, already now uh, the DD wound has started to turn black and it looks more dead. It looks less uh, inflammated also, uh, and, and definitely the cow is in no pain here. And then at day 27, we have a complete heal. And you, you can say here, this is a quite an M2, you know, is often a quite superficial wound, and there is not a lot of scar tissue below, so it's quite easy and quite fast to heal that up. If this would have been a, an, an old chronic M4, wound with a lot of destroyed tissue, well, we could still create a black surface and we could still remove any pain. Uh, but the reconstruction of the tissue to a level like this takes much more time. So definitely not within 27 days. So maybe three months or even six months. We don't know for sure. But the good thing is the cow is in good shape with no pain while this goes on. 
Okay, so just another cow from, from Steven. Again, just to show you what to expect. A cow like this, if you start spraying, for instance, in the milking parlor, what would this this open wound here? When you spray hoofers directly into an open wound like this, hoofers has a pH value of 2.5. This will hurt. So the cow will react like that. It really shakes the hoof part like that, trying to get this liquid stuff off because it's not very nice. So that is a clear reaction that this cow has an open wound, has a DD, probably an M1 or an M2, or an M4 with a new M2 in it. So, so at least there is an open wound that causes pain. Then what you, you must see if you're uh, applying correctly, if you're spraying good, that, as I showed, flushing, then you should, after only a couple of treatments, you should see a cow, the same cow, again, if you spray it, it, it is not reacting much. Maybe like a tickling, and then it just slowly removes its, its hoof away. So that is an indication that you have done a good job. It is an indication, indication that the product has the right contact to start the effect. And we have maybe gone to this stage here with a, a scab, a black scab, that covers the wound and therefore no longer is any tissue exposed to hoofers and it doesn't hurt. Also, the inflammation is gone. So for you, it is important to use this pain reaction as an evaluation if you're doing a good job. And in the beginning, you can actually use it to get a clear picture on how many cows actually has a painful DD. Because cows without a painful DD will not react at all. Okay, also look for the black scabs after let's say four or five weeks. Maybe you can flush gently some of the cows which you know have problems or had problems with DD. And then you could look for, you know, those black scabs here. Are they in the process of healing or maybe very close to being completely healed. This cow is not in this 27 days completely healed yet, but you can clearly see uh, the the progression. Uh, and I'm and I know now uh, three months later this cow is also healed. Stephen have no more cows in his herd with DD actually. He also told me that uh, the horn tissue generally improved in all his uh, in all his cow. This is not something we have done any studies uh, about, so this is more his word. But you can see here, this is a big classical uh, M2DD case. We are also capable of healing. I just want to mention one thing for you. If a cow is standing with the, of course, with the hoof like that, this DD wound here will face downwards. That means if we spray from above and down, it just runs off the hair and goes down to the floor. It doesn't get into contact with a DD wound like this. It has this kind of curtain surrounding it, protecting it from anything coming above. That is why we need a sprayer with an angle on the nozzle that points upwards. So we can spray as good as possible from beneath, slightly beneath and up. Then we can hit an area like this. Okay. Yeah. Just finally a, a few more. Examples the same again, M2 healing in 27 days. And the last one here on the side here is a nasty DD case. You can see the black scabs. It's not completely uh, free of inflammation yet, and there's still something going on, but definitely here at day 27, this is dead. This is a lot of uh, scab uh, covering the, the, the existing wound. This is also healed today. Okay, I have no more. Uh, I have no more uh, slides to show you today. Uh, I think that we should move to the questions, if any. Yes, yes. We, until now we have seven questions. And the first one is, has there been made an scientific research on the effect of hoofers? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, so that's a good question. Uh, so yeah, back in time, uh, Copenhagen University, uh, led by Munich Herpion, who is one of the leading hoof specialists in, in, in Denmark, she did a trial with, with uh, a similar product uh, like, like hoofers, or actually hoofers, and she showed a significant effect, and she actually showed a, a similar effect as we see from a powerful product like salicylic acid. 
so it was compared to salicylic acid on the bandage. It was compared to four weeks of treatment with, with UFOS in a diluted form, and we could see similar effects. Yeah, so it is published, and if anybody wants to have this, we can send it afterwards. Perfect. The next question is more to Risto, I think. What are the cleaning and disinfection practices for hooves and floors? Uh, how to explain this? Uh, the cleaning and disinfection uh, practices is uh, connected to the bedding. Uh, depend of, uh, of, of the environment. Uh, by using scraper or something else, it's uh, good to have clean hooves um, when we apply hoof force, but uh, there's a, uh, one issue about that. We don't have to clean our uh, hooves with water because the implementation of the hoof force, it's not going to appear. I, I believe Jan will agree yeah, with me. Yeah, let, let me support on that. So, so uh, yeah, I haven't mentioned all the recommendations. Sorry for that. But one is definitely do not wash uh, before applying uh, hoof force. It's a waste of time and it only, uh, if anything, it will just dilute hoof force. Because when you wash with water, you will have water in the skin, water in the hair. And then you spray hoof force afterwards and it's going to be diluted by all the water being there. If there is some, some manure, dirt, whatever, it doesn't matter. Hoofers is not inactivated by that. It, it is just absorbed by it and you, you will have more in contact uh, with the problem. So please do not. In terms of the scraper on the floor, uh, well, you should, I would recommend always scrape once every second hour, I would say. Otherwise, we will have too much manure on the floor if it's solid floor, for instance. And that when the scraper comes, it will have a, like a, a tsunami uh, slurry pile that always will completely soak uh, the hoof of, of the cows. So that is something we should avoid. Also, when we treat with the uh, hoof in a hoof bath or spraying, and we let out the cows from the milking panel or the rotary, for instance, we should always have a clean exit. A return area to the cow barn should be clean because that will allow some time for hoof to dry completely out and bind hard to skin. Uh, and wounds and hair and whatever. With any product, in, in fact, uh, where you treat, you should not allow the cow to go directly after treatment into a, a deep, uh, you know, layer of, of uh, slurry, for instance. It, it's, it's not a good idea. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question was also regarding the uh, to wash, and you have answered that already. So. Do we need to use HUFOS continuously or is it okay to pause the treatment once a while? Definitely HUFOS uh, is something uh, for good and ever. Yeah, we, we see that uh, if you start with HUFOS, you get a nice effect, you get a nice reduction, for instance, and then after half a year or a year or something, you stop. Then it only takes, I would say, less than a month, three, four weeks, Clockwork starts to come back. We have one example of a, a very good Danish uh, farmer who, who has been using Hoofers for three and a half years and is treating all his heifers, all his cow, dry cows, everything is treated if there is anything. He is at a level now where he is uh, almost seeing no new cases of DD and he's only treating once every third week. And he believes that the level of typonema and the general problems has gone to a very low level. But I believe that is one out of 100. I, I think it really takes something to go to that level. Yeah. From an iron, men, iron mental welfare point of view, how does HUFOS compare to formalin, copper, sulfate or other hood products? Good question. So, yeah. Besides the, the very small concentration of zinc in, in Bufos, there is no uh, uh, environmental restrictions compared to, for instance, copper, copper, which is forbidden in Europe because of environmental problems. And formalin being a huge uh, health hazard, being uh, carcinogenic, uh, potentially causing cancer, right? And also uh, uh, organic dissolver is very uh, harmful for 
inhaling and the airways provides a lot of headache and, and uh, secondary effects uh, on the general human health. Cows try their best to avoid both uh, formalin and, and copper sulfate. It's painful to walk through and the smell is, is not very nice for them, especially for, for formalin. I know that hoof trimmers in Denmark, they hate to go on farm and cut uh, a farm where they're using uh, formalin because it stays in the horn tissue and when they cut it, they heat up the horn tissue and those vapors of formalin goes into to their nose and they get headaches. So we have some hoof trimmers. They're actually saying, no, we are not cutting your hoops, cow, the hoops of your cow, if you're using formalin. What is the frequency of spraying hooves? Twice per week. Uh, yeah, I wasn't too clear on that. Sorry for that. So twice per week, uh, just like the hoof bath, Monday, Thursday or Tuesday, Friday, most days in between, because when you apply it and it is allowed to dry out, it stays there for some days. And then it, it is, like say, almost gone when you spray again. So we will have a constant uh, protection. If you have a major, a huge problem, and you are not very patient, maybe you should do it the first couple of weeks, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just to get a, a real punch effect and see a good effect fast. So, but in general, twice per week. What is your recommendation for starting with hoofers using spraying three times per week for one month and then? Yeah, you, if, if you really want to see if this can provide a clear difference, it is a good idea to go uh, three times per week just for a couple of weeks, no more. So six treatments in two weeks and then uh, continue with twice per week. And then twice per week, I would probably do, <coughs> I would say, at least three, six months, three to six months, best six months, where you, because it takes time. Those chronic cases, they, you know, in the beginning, you will see a, a huge drop in problems, but, but the last tough ones, the chronic ones, they take longer. So the decrease in DD will go more like that after several months. So if you want to have complete clear picture of the effect, probably you should wait until after six months before you start to say, okay, let's start with once per week. But then again, if you prefer using only a hoof bath and you think it's too expensive, you could also, before, say after a month, start with, with uh, once per week and then cross your fingers, this is enough. Can we actually er eradicate DD with hoofers? I'm told it's possible, impossible to cure DD. Yeah, we, I, I don't believe we can ever eradicate uh, uh, digital dermatitis. It, it's here for good and ever, that's for sure. It's gonna be in the environment it's going to be amongst uh, the cows at a certain level. But with hoofers, uh, what we generally see if used correct and over a longer period of time is that we go below 5% or even below 3%. So we go to a very low level where the new cases that may once in a while come up is very superficial. Something you can control quite fast in advantage with uh, whatever you prefer to use on the advantage. For instance, salicylic acid. You are saying not to wash before applying hoofers, but what about if the hoof is coated with slurry? Surely the hoofers cannot reach the skin? Definitely it can. So I will just, you can see my screen still, right? Yes. So I will just once again emphasize uh, Let's say there is a lot of dirt on this, not like in this case here, but there is a lot of dirt. When you use a sprayer like this, that more kind of wash of loss, it will definitely uh, go through. And if it is any uh, wet manure or, or slurry, whatever, it will definitely go through. It will mix up with it and it doesn't matter. If it is dry, dry kind of uh, scabs of manure, they will be broken down after a couple of treatments. So if, they, if it is really huge and there is a lot of dry manure that really binds hard, maybe the first time you could wash, right? But then afterwards, don't wash anymore. It's a waste of time. And if anything, you will decrease the effect. 
this is maybe obvious, but if I'm using Hoofers as a spray, then I assume you should not use any other products, for example, formalin and hoof bars. Yeah, it, you know, it, this is a very good question, actually, and and uh, because I didn't mention that either. You're absolutely right. If you start with Hoofers, you must not use anything else. The, the function of this product is different from formalin and cover sulfate. Formalin and cover sulfate and other um, uh, other uh, products are meant to kill. They are disinfectant, so they kill bacteria. We don't believe in killing bacteria when a cows walk back into uh, the cow barn and gets reinfected five seconds later. So this is different. So this is something about increasing the wound healing. And if you're using other products together with hoofers, you will disturb that wound healing because, for instance, formalin and cover sulfate breaks down tissue. You see, so if you build up tissue with hoofers and you also use cover or formalin, you then break down tissue. So that is definitely not something you should do. Yes, one last question. What is the approximately price of hoofers per cow per year? Can you say that? Yeah, I mean, I can only speak for, for, for the Danish market, right? Uh, but if it is in the uh, in a sprayer, for instance, uh, I would say, fra, no, let's just take an average. So, 40 divided. So, five, six euro per cow per year used in a sprayer. If it is in a hoof bar, you have to time that up with three. Okay. So, it's more expensive, uh, as said, in, in the hoof bar. And that is also one of the major reasons why we recommend uh, the sprayer. And actually, when a farmer tries this a couple of times, it's not that time demanding. It, it goes quite fast. Yes, OK. There are no more questions. Thank you very much, Resto and Jan. Jan, uh, maybe you can present the next webinar, which is connected to this webinar. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, just to round this uh, session off, I, I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something. We haven't covered it all, but clearly you can ask some questions after this uh, if you have any more. Um, so the last comment would just be, we have the next uh, webinar in two weeks time, the 14th of October. And this time again, it is about hoof health, not from an environmental point of view, but from a nutritional point of view. So here we will present a very interesting uh, talk about nutritional solutions that will include, increase the hoof health. Please join that next time in a couple of weeks time. So thank you for participating. Hope to see you in two weeks time. Bye and stay safe.